Test the one, two. Say greetings, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to this commencement exercise. Mother has graduated and she's in a new land, and we come to celebrate 92 years. So, if you could put your hands together, let's give God praise for her life. I'm sure that I voice a sentiment of appreciation to all of you. Uh, where we stand, some label this as the last mile of the way. And most certainly during this COVID-19 season, we appreciate every moment that you're giving us today to be here for these few moments. And for you pressing your way, uh, and thinking it not robbery in terms of protecting yourself according to the guidelines of what has been put in place, that you had enough faith to come. 
so we are very much appreciative of that. Let's, let's, the family has given me a program that will proceed in this order with the son-in-law, Pastor John E. Morris Jr. will come and give us a prayer. Then we will have a solo by Rachel Hill. And then Dr. Lewis Allen, uh, our Christian education director, will give us uh, Psalms 91. And then we will come back with uh, further directions. Let us proceed in that order. Look to the hill for this from all our help. Father God, Father of the Son, Father of the Holy Spirit. We invoke your presence and loving kindness at this hour where we come together to remember and to celebrate. We thank you, O oh God, for this Sequoia whose branches have gone deep and whose roots have allowed us to stand on her shoulders. We ask, O oh Heavenly Father, at this time that you surround us with your loving arms of comfort. Comfort this son, this daughter, his grandchildren, his niece, this nephew, his family members in this church community. We come now knowing, O oh God, that you're too wise with respect to anything that goes on, everything that happens, you are aware and nothing catches you unaware. So right now we pull on your strength, we pull on your loving kindness, we pull on your comfort. And we know, oh God, that in the days to come, the weeks, the months, and the years, that we have precious memories by which we can remember, reflect, and rejoice. And we thank you for 92. Yes. We thank you for each and every day and every moment that she loved us, poured into us, scolded us, cooked for us, and most of all, just loved us. So we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you be with us right now. It is in his name that we do pray. Amen. in his son they called him Jesus he came to love healed and forgive he lived and died To buy my pardon, and life is worth believing just because he lives, because he can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I And life is worth the living yet. 
time there is a space and a place for remarks. There are two names listed. Also there is another name that comes before those two names which is two minutes please. Amen. Sister Cynthia 
supplier, you come as an employer, when you have uh, Mother Patricia Oscar, who is of our mother's ministry, the mother of the church, she will come after Sister Lyon. Thank you. I cannot tell you, can you hear me with this? He's turning it back I it is for me to have been asked to speak um, on behalf or for Ludie. Ludie Arnold worked for my husband and for me for uh, 33 years and we've known her for 45 years. She felt, we felt that she was so very, very special to us and we love her dearly. In 1975, I was a teacher at Headland High School in East Point. Well, it was then Headland High School. And I was teaching all day. I was working on an advanced degree. My husband was working, trying to advance his career. And so we decided we needed help. Well, across the hall from me was Morel Chapman. She was a math teacher who also employed Ludy. And she, at Ludy, worked for Morell and took care of her son. And her son, Gil Chapman, is standing back there now. Like he just retired, so if that gives you any idea how, how many years ago this has all been. But Ludy, uh, Morell was telling me one day that she had a woman who worked for her and that she was a very special woman and she took care of Gil. One day she went home and Ludie was still there working and she should not have been there. And so she asked Ludie, she said, Ludie, what are you doing here working? And Ludie said, well, I had to leave for a couple of hours during the day. And so I'm coming back to finish my time. Now, you know, Morel would never have known whether Ludie was there or not. But that speaks to who Ludie is and was. And so I said, okay, that's what I need to hire. So Ludi came and started working for us. We never ever questioned whether she was doing what she was supposed to be doing because we were never there. Ludi was very special. She not only cleaned our house, but if she saw silver that she thought needed polishing, it got polished. If she saw copper or brass that she thought needed to be done, it was taken care of. Now I'll tell you that story because I have a teapot that sits right in the kitchen and it reminds me of Ludie every day. Now the teapot was given to me by some students when I moved to Atlanta. But Ludie polished that copper tea kettle so much, you can't read the inscription on it anymore. <laughs> I keep that because it reminds me of Ludie. Now Ludie was also a woman of great faith, as you all know. And we would often talk about our churches and we would talk about our faith. But her work ethic that I would see over and over and over again reminded me of a Bible verse in Colossians 3, verse 23. And it says, whatever you do, do it from the heart of the, for the Lord, not for the people. And that was really what I thought was the essence of Ludi. She was a woman also of silent strength, you know. Even though she suffered from asthma the entire time we knew her, she found a way to keep on going. Ludie's name comes up in our hotel periodically because my husband will ask something and say, well, why don't we do such and such? Now, we means me. And I will say, because I don't want to do it, I don't have the time to do it, I don't... And he will turn around to say to me with a smile, where's Ludy? <laughs> you know, that is said with love. Please know that is all said totally with love because we loved her so much. She made our life better. I can tell you that we will miss Ludy, even though we didn't communicate a whole lot in the last two years, but at least a couple of times every, every year we would talk. But she will always be in our thoughts and in our prayers. She has certainly earned her place with our Lord. And I can hear God saying to her right now, Ludy, you have been a good and faithful servant. Welcome. And I say, God bless you, Ludy.
If you have lost somewhere in the darkness and you feel there is no hope for you and just call on the captain of this ark of safety and you know his name is Jesus and he will rescue you. When I arrived at Enum with my husband and three children over 40 years ago, one of the melodious voices I heard was that of Mother Moody Arnold. The lyrics I read are from the song that she would sing. And so many people embraced us and left me to speak. As coordinator for the Mother Ministry, she and I served together in ministry. Miss Moody is cooperative and believed in supporting all activities, if not physically, but definitely financially. After thankfully serving at Enon, her family now has gone, and Miss Moody is where the sun is shining. Last week, she stepped on board of the old ark of safety, where Jesus is her captain. Jesus Christ has rescued her, and she's not sheltered from the storm and rain. Take your rest, Mother Ludy. No more hospitals, no more words of this world, no more pandemic, no more mass. Take your rest over there in the ark of safety. Amen. This time, answer your prayer that the daughter will come, Debbie. Reverend Debbie Morris will come. Render so long, then I will come and give you your logistical remarks. because I know I won't see everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it so very much. Your love and kindness shown to me and my family during this time. Um, these grounds is where I grew up and that was the old church. And my mom raised us here and my mom was a God-fearing woman that prayed. When I say all the time, I mean all the time. But that's what brought us up and that's what kept us on the straight and narrow path. I love her dearly, and I thank God for what she, how she raised Kenneth and I. And you can never say that perhaps that a mother that, that was alone and raising her children can't raise her children the right way. My mom is a, is a great example of that, and she did up until her last breath. And I share this with you. I got a chance, and I'm grateful that God allowed me to come home a couple of weeks ago to see her. I had to take her to a couple of doctor's appointments. And I said, Mom, I hate for you to have to go through all this. And she said, put my mask on and I'm good to go. So I am grateful for her spirit. Mom, I love you. And I ask God to give me strength because I know that he will. I love how to live holy. I learn how to live right. I learned, I learned, I 
I've learned how to suffer. For if I suffer, I'll get eternal, eternal life. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned, I've learned, I've learned how to suffer. For if I suffer, I'll get eternal, eternal life. But I can hear my mama. But when I see Jesus, Amen. When I see Jesus, Amen. All my troubles, all my trials will all be over. When I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, Amen. When I see Jesus, where y'all go? Hey, amen. I know that. When I see Jesus, hey, yeah. Hey, amen. All the troubles, all the trials, they are all over. Because when she saw Jesus, when she saw Jesus, when she saw Jesus, I know she said, I'm confident in knowing that she is absent from the body. Come on now. But she's present she's with the with Lord. Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with moving as long as you got a better place to go. Yes. Yes. And um, so we're thankful for her life, thankful for the kind, genuine, sweet spirit that she is. I won't say it was because when you're with Christ. Come on now. <laughs> You don't die, you just yes. transfer. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so when I think about her life in these few moments that I'll share with you from scripture basis, I believe she can join in with the Apostle Paul when he says, I'm now ready mm -hmm. yeah. to be offered. Second Timothy chapter number four, verse six, seven, and eight. And the time of my departure yeah. is at hand. And she sums it up, Jessica. She says, I have fallen. I raised my children. I went to church. I labored. Fought a good fight. Now, 92 years, yeah. I have finished Come on. my course. Jesus. But in the process of all of the trials and tribulations that I faced, I kept the faith. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's the sweet thing about mother, for you and Kenneth uh, there, is that uh, she said this this is not for me only. She said I, I, since I kept the faith, yeah. I have a, a right to a crown of life, uh -huh. but not to me only, yeah. but unto all those that love His appearing. So that's the reason why I say it's not that she 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 was she never will be was because she's living that's it. on the inside of us. Yeah. And so I hope that somehow, some way, that for some mean member, yeah. she transfers some of that sweet. Yeah. Let the church say amen. Because Mother Lulie had a way, yes. and I would press my way to get to her and Pauline after worship sometime, and they would just be carrying on conversation. And I gathered the process after being here all this time that all, I know my cousins now. 
And so I walked up and I said, hey, Mother Cousin Luda, how you doing? And we have a great conversation. And she had a way, John, of holding my hand in that yes. little pack yes. to let me know she loved me. Yes. I can still feel it because I felt the genuineness yes. of her sweetness. And I just believe that in the process of all of the trials, that she is saying amen, out of all of the issues and the vicissitudes of life that she encountered, now that she has, in the process of 92 years, so when we go to school and we go to school and we deal with every level and aspect of schooling, we often take a test. And sometimes that's why in sickness and in trials and tribulation, you don't hear God saying anything because the teacher don't talk during the test. So we go through all of these tests and all of these issues and after a while, if we write a good transcript, we can get a transfer. Yeah. And so that's where mother is now. She's just yeah. transferred. Yeah. She, she's still with us. Yeah, she we can still talk to her. Yeah. And for, particularly physically, we can't hear her voice, but with all of the lessons yeah. that she gave us will resonate within our spirit to cause us to walk as she did. Holy woman, yeah. saved, sanctified, yeah. could sing her way and get me happy. And there were many times I could get her to sing that, come, come over here. And I didn't even have to preach that Sunday because the church would catch on fire because she was an anointed, saved, sanctified woman of God. And that's the blessing that we know, that she's absent and present at the same time. This place where we are standing, ladies and gentlemen, is nothing but a subdivision full of vacant houses. Don't nobody live here. We are deposited here with a home is on the other side. Her home is on the other side. She's not even here with us today. She's in that great cloud of witnesses. Because if you write a transcript, you get a transfer, and then you often have a review so you can have a reunion. And right now, as we walk through this cemetery the other day, they have naming the people. Mother is having a reunion. And what she's telling us now even now, even now, as she's absent from us, but present with the reunion, yes. she's telling us, live so you can come over yes. here. Yes. Come over here. Yes. That's what she's saying. Yes. So let me just challenge you to walk by faith so that in the end, after you get through writing your transcript, you can get a transfer. Yes. She's absent but she's present at the same time. We love you, we gonna yeah. miss you, but we know that we'll see you again. I know that I'm gonna walk right so I can see her again. That's all we got to do. Now in walking right, that don't mean you're always right. right. But you gotta have enough spirit in you that's righteous enough to say I failed and fallen short because I serve a God who will pick you up and turn you all the way around and place your feet on solid ground. Mother Ludi, I love you, and I showed you that while you were living, and you showed me as well. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we will have the committal. For so much it has pleased Almighty God in his wise and omniscient wisdom to take out of this world the soul of our dear departed mother, Ludi B. Uh, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We are looking forward for the general resurrection and the last day and the life to come. John said, I therefore heard a voice saying, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord and rest from their labors and their works we follow them. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you. First, give it honor to God to you, Pastor, and the family having said thank you for all your consoling work. What you have said, consoled the family, family, sick and sick, thank you. To the many friends who gathered with them all family and say thank you for coming the last mile away. To the family on behalf of my seven staff, we take the time out to acknowledge you our appreciation for your children and your funeral counseling. 
doing your hours of reading. Doing so to get more black people to keep the children going to the community. And family and friends, a few minutes ago, the children, your parents and flowers out. The children are doing dancing out flowers for you. Flower represents your last token of love you place on the cast of love one. After which, we're going to give the benediction and then we'll throw it down. Would you stand, please? Those have a flower, stand, please. Come on, you're going to have to pass one, two, until I pass one, I'll go back to it. Time to report the cast of this. Good, good, good. Get back to where we want to sit back to your seat, please. Yeah, just come around this way. Yeah. Come all the way around this way, please. Yeah. Come out and discuss this way, please. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. 